What's up with it? Beast Rounds of Life podcast, episode number five. Your man stacked though, De Niro in the building. I'm holding it down solo right now, uh, waiting on my, my co-host to get here. Actually, uh, DJ T. Rob going to be out this week. We're going to still hold it down for him regardless, though. Um, so, yeah, man, welcome to the weekend, you know, Saturday. Um, very busy week, man. We're going to get into a lot today. Um I, I mean, it's probably going to be so much stuff, man. We might run out of time, but, you know, we're going to try to get to everything, though. Um, just so much happening in the week. Um, before we get going, though, please make sure y'all following us on Twitter at BRL Crew DMV. Uh, also on Facebook at BRL Podcast DMV. Catch us on IG, Instagram, of course, at Beats Rhymes Life. Uh, that's life with a Y. And make sure you please catch up with us on SoundCloud. Uh, we definitely on there for them good audio streams. Also, uh, subscribe to our YouTube page as well. And uh, we're definitely going to have it popping on Spotify, Apple Music, Google Play, all that good stuff. Uh, so make sure you catch us on there. Um, before we get started, too, let me make sure uh, I, I give a shout out to T.I., man. Prayers going out to T.I., uh, this week, he actually lost his sister uh, in a tragic car accident, man. It's crazy, but um, about a week ago, she got into a car accident. Uh, and it was in very serious condition. Uh, she was in the hospital. She was basically on life support for about a week, and uh, she just wasn't responsive, wasn't looking good. So uh, the family decided that the best thing to do would be for her um, to go ahead and, and, and transition so, uh, one time for T.I., man, shout out to him and his family, uh, definitely prayers going out to them uh, for the loss of his oldest sister, Precious. Um, a lot of y'all probably saw her on, uh, on, on the reality show that T.I. did uh, on VH1. She was a, a major part of that show, uh, was been you know, on there for years, so, um, you know, definitely uh, somebody that kind of, you know, became a part of our lives, so prayers up to them. And all that good stuff uh, and condolences out to T.I. and his family. Um, so another thing, too, though, is funny, man. On my way over here, so a lot of y'all probably know. I don't know if y'all know or not. Um, Offset dropped a new album. Um, I think, I believe it dropped Friday. It, so it dropped yesterday at, at midnight. A brand new album, brand new solo project. Uh, Father of Four is the title. Um, and I, when it dropped, I was like, all right, you know, I, I made sure that I listened to it. I told myself, man, I got to get this a good listen before I go on to the air and start doing the podcast and all that good stuff and, so I can critique it properly. And I got to say, man, in my opinion, for real, Offset probably has the better solo album out of all the Migos. Out of all Migo members, I would say... Out of Quavo, <laughs> I'm just speaking facts, bro. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm kicking it off with the facts, baby. But yeah, nah, real rap. I, I, I truly believe, in my opinion, Offset has the better album, the better solo album of all of the members of the Migos. Quavo, uh, you know, a lot of people probably was fucking with his joint. I tell you right now, for me personally, Takeoff's album was not getting it done for me. Um, <laughs> You know, I actually, my prediction was that he was going to have the best album out of all three members, but I was sadly mistaken. Well, actually, not sadly mistaken. I was gladly mistaken uh, and pleasantly surprised by by my man Offset, man. You know, he got his stride back now that he's back with Cardi B and all that. You know what I'm saying? He got in that studio and, and the boy went to work, man. I, I'm, I'm trying to tell you, a few a few notable tracks that I, I'm fucking with um, off the rip, you got... How Did I Get Here, a track featuring J. Cole. Um, you know, a lot of y'all may think that Offset may not be as lyrical compared to an artist like J. Cole, but he definitely, uh, okay, Lil Drake, he definitely um, held his own on that track with, uh, with Cole World, so I'm fucking with that one for sure. Uh, another track, Made Men, uh, just Offset on his own. Uh, he definitely doing his thing, man. Uh, that's a solo track for him. Um this one here, y'all definitely might want to check out Wild Wild West featuring Gunna. You know, Gunna doing his thing right now, blowing up on the scene. Uh, so they teamed up, got this joint popping off. And let me tell you, man, that joint crank like shit. 
Um, also, you definitely want to check for number 10, Underrated. That's another solo joint for Offset. He by himself on there going off. Um, but the best track to me on that album, that standout joint, uh, track number 11, Legacy, featuring uh, Travis Scott and 21 Savage. Um, so I'm going to tell y'all, off the break, 21 Savage versus the one you want to look out for. Um, personally, for me, it's been a while since I had to rewind a track to hear it again because the shit just sounds so good. It was just so, it just caught me off guard. Like, damn, I had to do that for this track right here. 21 Savage verse. I'm telling y'all right now, man, he in another zone right now and I'm fucking with it, man. Definitely check that out. Um, he dropped a, some great lines in that one. Definitely some rap quotables in there. And then you got a uh, track number 14, Quarter Millie featuring uh, Gucci man. Um, that's probably the hardest joint to me, you know, as, as far as beat wise. Um, that joint definitely not, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, I was bumping it in the car and, uh, you know, I was definitely fucking with that, man. So, um, there it is. Uh, Father of Four, brand new album, Offset from the Migos. Um, this is his solo venture into the, into the, uh, to the music game. Definitely worth checking out. Um. I'm going to let y'all know that right now. Uh, also, Phil Ide dropped the album, too, this past week. Um, shout outs to Phil, I Phil Ide, you know what I'm saying, representing the home team. Um, I, I really wouldn't call it an album. I'd probably call it more like an EP type of deal. It's about six, seven tracks on there. Um, definitely worth checking out, you know what I'm saying? If, if you like the more melodic shit, you know, more, more into, you know, the lyricism. Um, the production is tight on there as well. Um, and you know, one standout track for me, he, he, he got a joint with Wale and Gold Link. Um, I forgot the name of it. I, matter of fact, let me look that joint up real quick since I ain't live streaming. I, I could, uh, I could just go to my title real quick and let y'all know. Still, you know, waiting on my co-host and everything. So I hope, you know, I, ain't, I ain't looking too crazy here. I got the show got to go though. It, it's got to go. Um, I'm going to let y'all know what that track is for Phil Ide, though. Yeah, he dropped it on the sneak tip. Um, I kind of caught a little promotion uh, probably like the week before. But it's still like, it, it caught a lot of people off guard, man. Um, oh, here we go. About to let y'all know right here. Yeah, so the jump... On uh on the Gold Link album featuring Go uh, I'm sorry on the I Day out Phil I Day album featuring Gold Link and Wale is called Something Real. Um, very clever, very creative song. Um, I ain't gonna you know let the cat out of the bag too much. Y'all go ahead check that thing out. Um, it's a good look. It's a great look, man. Um, so there you go. Couple couple brand new joints just hit the hit the streets, hit the digital game, hit the streaming services this week. Uh, Offset and Phil I Day. Hometown hero, check him out. Um, so let's see. Um, I wanted to touch on before we get into uh too much of the deep shit. Um, one time for Colin Kaepernick, man. Um, last week we had so much to talk about, we didn't get a chance to to get to this one, man. But I definitely wanted to shout out Colin Kaepernick, man. One time for Colin Kaepernick and winning his collusion case against the NFL. Um that's a big time win, you know, for, for folks that are not really familiar with how those types of things go down. Uh, the NFL doesn't settle with anybody, <laughs> you know, in any type of case, whether it's a CTE case, uh, whether it's a, a compensation case, a benefits case, any type of you know grievance. The NFL very rarely settles uh, with anybody. So the mere fact that they settle with Colin Kaepernick. Uh, just goes to show that there was uh, some instances and some credibility to his claims about teams basically colluding together uh, to blackball him and prevent him from getting back into the league and, and being signed to a team. So um, they settled for an undisclosed amount. So uh, we will never know how much money he got broken off, but... We can say that uh, he was looking for his market value in the whole situation, which was $20 million. So uh, it's pretty much safe to say that he probably got paid his $20 million or something close to that. So, you know what I'm saying? He definitely got the bag on that one. Um, 
but it's bigger than that, of course. I mean, he beat the NFL. And at, at this point, so what's going to happen is um, he'll be able to be signed by any team who, who wants him, um, and he can go on and continue his football career. Uh, now, he had another option, uh, another uh, football league on the rise coming up, uh, the American Association for Football, I think the AAF or something like that. You know, they, they're, they're uh, uh, you know, an offshoot league that's trying to come up in the football game. Um, there were some rumblings, some some talk about, you know, them wanting to sign him as, as, as their marquee player, but, you know, not going to happen. You know what I'm saying? They ain't got enough money for, Ka- for Kaepernick, so... Um, he probably going to wind up back on the NFL team at some point. Um, your guess is as good as mine is to, you know, who that team will be. And thank God I got my co-host here. Come on up here, girl. So I, 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 I ain't got to be struggling by myself. <laughs> Sit your hello, ass hello, down. Hello, hello, hello. Tangy in the building. Oh, she decides to show up today. Make her entrance. I like that, though. That's going to probably sound good on the audio joint. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I didn't mean to make an entrance. I apologize. But we're, we're, I'm glad to have you. We're yeah, glad yeah. to have you. Good, good, good. We're, we're better people for you being here now. You know what I'm saying? No it's bullshit. It's good to be here, even though it's raining. And all it, that, it, it look a little messy out there, man. I'm yeah, glad you got started. here safe. Oh, it okay. wasn't raining. I had to leave out the house earlier, and it wasn't raining. Yeah. So. Yeah, when I left out, it wasn't raining. It was looking like it was trying to do something, but... Well, you got here in one piece. Yep. That's all that matters. <laughs> so, uh, so I was just telling everybody, you know, so as you know, no DJ T. Rob, he out this week. He'll be back next week. Oh, he's on vacation, right? Um, he He's on vacation in, in Miami, M-I-A-O, you know what I'm saying? It'd have been nice to take the show down there with him, you know, know what I'm saying? Right? <laughs> but, <laughs> I could use the tan. Yeah, no bullshit. I, I could use some some of my damn stuff. But we, we, we might have to work that out. We might have to work that out at some point. In the future, man, I don't think that'll be a problem. But um, but yeah, I was just talking about Colin Kaepernick, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, mm-hmm. I, I shouted out prayers up to Ti and, and his, you know, for his the passing of yes. his sister. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know you saw that, man. That was crazy, right? The whole car accident situation. The fuck, man. Coincidentally, right after he comes out with his, remember mm-hmm. we were talking about that last week on the show. The disc record? Yes. Hmm. I don't even want to make that connection right there. But, I mean, it's it's worth thinking about. I mean, it, it is definitely a hell of a coincidence that that just happened. And, yeah, like I was saying, like, it happened over a week ago. She'd been on life support for a week. You yeah, saw that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's crazy, man. That's crazy shit. Um, but, nah, I, I, I shouted out T.I., of course. But, nah, Colin Kaepernick... Um, Winning against the NFL, that was a big ass win because, like I said, the NFL don't pay nobody. So, you know, the fact that you know he got the bag off him, you know, you know, he was going for twenty mil. Yeah. So he he got that or more because they they knew that they was wrong. They knew the teams were you know mobbing together to blackball them. You know what I'm saying? So it was some shit there. So. Or the ratings were down. That the too. Support was down. The NFL merchandise sales were down. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they have to do something to save face. Yeah, no bullshit. No bullshit. So they did that. What's up? What you reaching for? I was. No, I think I'm cleaning my nose. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what's oh, it? this thing You right want here. that? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So, you know, big up to Colin Kaepernick. We're going to see what happens, man. I think, you know, somebody going to pick him up now at this point. Uh, you know, could be the, the Panthers. You know, they picked up Eric Reed. Uh, you know, his homeboy. And his partner in the whole protest, mm-hmm. uh, he's already playing with the Panthers, so they may pick him up. Um, some people were talking about the Patriots. Uh, so, you know, we'll I see. I don't see him going there. <laughs> yeah, not he, with what they got going not. on now. <laughs> <laughs> no. You don't see the Patriots, though? Wow. I mean, he can't go to a team called the Patriots in New England, which is, like, still very racist. And, and no. It, it that is like white America's football team now. Pretty much. They they have become white America's football team. But, you know, they got some other shit going on. With they You heard their owner just got caught up. Yeah. Got caught up trying to solicit hoes down in, down in Florida. In Florida, you know what I mean? <laughs> Here's my thing. This is not the first time he's paid for anything. No question. So. No question. How a coincidence... I, what are the coincidence that now that he's like 
one of the faces of meek support in the whole prison reform. Speak thing. on it. Speak on it. I know, you know where you're going. Go ahead. <laughs> he was at the Super Bowl, you know, in a different way he had never been before, you know, out there with Cardi B and a bunch of other stuff. So can you? And now he's caught up in human trafficking. Yeah, I, here's my thing. And I think we're about to make the same point, basically, and is that the establishment don't like him supporting me. They don't mm-hmm. like him rolling around with me and all these other rappers going out, you know, getting on stage, partying with Cardi B. Exactly. They don't like him at all the sporting events, rocking Meek Mill chain. They don't like that. And they definitely don't like the fact that they... That him and the 76ers owner helped get Meek out of jail. The establishment don't like that. So what they doing? They going after him. Exactly. I, you we woke. I mean, yep. that, when you woke, you can see that shit a mile away, man. Pretty much. <laughs> when you when the when the take... blind is off, yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, come on, yeah. It's a that's a no brainer. So now they're coming after him. You know what I mean? So yeah, the Patriots may not be a good look for Colin Kaepernick right now. Mm-hmm. But but look, Robert Kraft is a billionaire, man. He's gonna be all right. <laughs> he gonna be straight He can fight it He got enough he money To fight that is. You know what I'm I mean sh- I'm sure I'm sure he does The evidence is probably Not there mm-hmm. I'm sure he can get off Yeah I mean it was a sting So they they caught A rock of a bomb As a matter of fact I heard like One of the There's somebody A sports reporter Is who I heard this from Somebody on ESPN Adam Schefter Is his name He mentioned that There's actually A bigger name On the list Than Robert Kraft <laughs> And why hasn't his name been mentioned? Exactly. <laughs> uh, there's one name that pops to my pops into my mind. I ain't gonna go there right now, but there's one name in particular that that could pop into my mind that is and impossible. He's, he's in sports. No. Like, okay. No. Okay. He's in the world. He's like. Mm, okay. Big time. Mm, okay. Yeah. So. Uh, we'll see how that develops. It's going to be, uh, I'm sure, some more names that come out and drop from that list right there. So uh, we're going to stay tuned. But yeah. Um, so the other big story of the week, I, I've, I've really tried not to go in on this story and about this story. Tangie, you know, I mean, I really tried to stay away from this junk until all the facts came out. And what did I say last week? Because I already <laughs> know what you're about to say. And I said last week. <laughs> that is something sketchy about this story. You did, you did, you did. You made a good. That was a good call. That was a hell of a call. And I mean, let's be honest. I mean, I think we all had that feeling, though. It was something a little sketchy about this story. But we, we, we gave him the benefit of the doubt, and we we wanted to support him. So let's, let's get down to it. So basically, <laughs> you know, first off, let's let me just frame this by saying. Um, it's unfortunate that this happened during Black History Month, but this has been a bad month for Chicago. You know, a lot of a lot of bad shit is going on in Chicago. But overall, Black History Month, like between fucking R. Kelly, J- Jesse Smollett, and Tristan Thompson, like this, you know, this ain't been the best Black History Month for us. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Been a lot of shit going on, but definitely. In Chicago in particular this week, you know, their police department is a they they on their job. <laughs> they make it move. So, you know, let's start with this Jesse Smollett shit. Let's unpack this fucking bullshit, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, we all know what happened. Uh he he went to the police and authorities and tried to charge some individuals with an alleged hate crime. Uh as the investigation went on. Fast forward to up to now, come to find out, so the dudes that apparently pulled off the whole stunt, he hired, of course, paid him $3,500 a piece, dumbass, wrote him checks to make the payments, you know, I don't know what the hell he was thinking about that, I mean, you ever heard of not leaving a paper trail, bruh? So, anyway, um, paid him off, you know... <laughs> The guys eventually got caught at the airport in Chicago, and that was basically how this whole story unraveled and shit. Um, shout out to the to the vape plug. Oh yeah. Yeah, we I'll we online. On the, on the Please do. Yes. Please do. I need to know these things. Okay. Yes. Um. So yeah. So come to find out. So basically, once once them African the Nigerian dudes got caught up, it was a wrap. 
Because once they got caught up at the airport, they started telling on everything. They spilled the whole beans, spilled exactly. all the beans on them. They not about to go to jail for that. Yeah, hell no. They like, look, <laughs> we gonna tell you everything. They told the cops everything. Told them it was a fake stunt. You know that he paid them for just to pull off and come to find out he just was looking for publicity, man. Like it was a publicity stunt. They said that, uh, what did it say? Something about he wanted to uh, get paid more money. But they were going to kill him off anyway. Yeah, that's, that's what, what I, I heard. heard. That's what I heard that too. I heard that <laughs> yeah, too. I know, that was good shit. <laughs> but but um, the funny thing about that is though, okay, they was going to kill him off, but he was getting almost $2 million a year though, contract wise. So, nigga, you, you get in the bag, bruh. Like, how much more do you want? You're getting damn near $2 million a year to play a character on TV. Okay, they was going to kill you off, but the other thing about this too is dog, you killed all you killed all your future potential earnings, man. Any anything that you could have done going forward that would have made you money, it's a wrap for that now cuz your career's a wrap. You're done. Done deal. You think so though? I think he's done. I I think people are going to look at him, they're going to look at him crazy. You know what I'm saying? Because just for the simple fact that like you kind of said, the story was sketchy off the break, but mm -hmm. people still got behind him and still gave him the Benny. Like, they still supported him. But and see, I think he let a lot of people down with, with this shit. You know yeah, what I mean? But this, this should be a lesson to a lot of us that yeah. we should not be so emotionally invested in these stories. True. Like, how many times do situations like this have to happen before we start being like, Okay, I gotta start questioning everything because mm -hmm. this just doesn't sound right. Right, like it's no reason why me and maybe like a handful of other people were <laughs> sitting there like, hmm, something doesn't sound right about this story. It couldn't have been just us. No, it I'm wasn't sure just us. It was not just us. The people no. reporting the story had to be like, you know, that's what made them go <laughs> even deeper into the story. Right, because like this shit just don't sound right. Yeah, yeah. But we black people, you know, we, we get behind our people, man. We're going to support our people, especially when you like them. Like when you're a likable celebrity, it, yes. it's a catch-22 because, you know what I'm saying, you, you, you want to support them, you want to believe them, but at the same time, you do have to question everything. You always got to question everything. So. Right, but that's why I think he'll be okay. Like, after he goes through all of this, because at the end of the day, well, maybe us, right? Nah. But this generation now, like, what are you willing to do for attention? Like... Sometimes you have to jump out there and do something. I mean, maybe not this crazy, but nah, I mean, think nah, about it. If you're, if you're to trying it. to save your job, I mean, the only thing he really did wrong was file a false claim. He didn't. I mean, and then he he played on our emotions. But I mean, Donald Trump does that all day, every day. But his He's plot. The, see, the thing about it though, his whole scheme and plot covered multiple states. So that's when you get the felony shit involved. You know what I'm saying? Right, but see, that falls on him. But for us, it's like, okay, well, we fell for it. Ha, ha, ha. Let's move on. Like, that, I, I think he deserves, you know, whatever. Like, I don't think we should just know, blackball man. him after this. Because, like I said, what extreme would you go through to prove that you are worth being paid more money. He didn't have to do that. He he, he, he would have had to. other projects coming down the pipeline. He didn't have to do that. No, Even if they was going to kill you who, off on who Empire. Else, who is checking on. for him? Like, what other projects? Has anybody heard of him being in a movie? Um... I mean, we like, don't know. He could have had he could have had some some negotiations going on behind the scenes that we don't know about for some roles in different shows. I mean, the Bama could sing and act. You know what I'm saying? That's a novelty. He ain't no triple threat, but at least he was a double threat. That's gonna get you somewhere. That's gonna get you some looks. Look, he believed in himself enough to think that this was gonna <laughs> that this plan was gonna work. I don't know. That nigga was delirious. <laughs> if he believed that shit in himself, he was delirious, man. I mean, out of all the things that people can do for attention, like if he was white, we really wouldn't even be giving him this much. I, I really th believe that because people hmm. like the Kardashians, like they do all types of wild stuff for attention and nobody, like we're just like, oh, this is just another story. Like with them, it's kind of like, oh, this is just, we play into it because it's the high, it gives us something to do, but... Or something to talk about, but is is that the era that we in? We, I mean, because this this Jesse Smollett shit is to me, it's extreme clout chasing. This is this is clout yes. chasing. Yes, 
at his highest level right now. Like he has raised the bar on clout chasing. So yeah. the next thing that happens after this shit is going to be even more ridiculous. I feel like it's got to stop. Well, look, we got to stop that shit somehow. Takashi Six Nine tried to kill Chief Key. <laughs> like how <laughs> this era of quote unquote clout chasing is is really getting out of hand. Yeah. Eventually, yeah. it's going to come to a point where somebody may potentially be hurt. Potentially. I mean, look, we, we lived through the Biggie and Tupac era, so we already know shit could get real. You know what I'm saying? But it's, but it's like we haven't learned. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, it, so we already got Takashi getting ready to get locked up. Mm-hmm. You know, we just talked about YMW Melly. Him just, you know, he just murdered his two associates, you know, He's not that big of an artist, so I guess it didn't make a huge impact. Mm, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to take a bigger artist, right. but it's going to happen. Like you said, the next thing is going to be somebody fucking getting killed. I hate to say it, but you know, this generation is going to have to see that, man. Shit can get real. You you can't play with this stuff, man. Pretty much. You can't play with it. Um, so I don't know what's going to happen to this dude. Like I said, with, with Jesse Smollett, I'm, I'm going to just say this. I, I don't think, I think he should be canceled. You know what I'm saying? I think he should be thrown in the bucket, <laughs> the same bucket with all the other black celebrities we don't fuck with, like Kanye West. Yeah, who but else? But that's what I'm saying. Omarosa. If we, if, if we can forgive them, we definitely could forgive them. We haven't forgiven them. He, he, he really hasn't done anything to us. We haven't forgiven them, though. They still oh, in that bucket. I don't know. Kanye, I, th I think he's in the forgivable. He's, nah. on, he's on the line. He's straddling the fence. Well, Kanye, Kanye, you got one supporter over here. <laughs> I haven't given up on Kanye yet, I guess. <laughs> I, I mean, like I said, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer in those first three albums, the trilogy of Kanye. <laughs> to me, those are his, his best pieces of work. Mm -hmm. um, and I hold those pieces of work very near and dear to me because in my life, they were soundtracks of my life. But I, I can't fuck with the new Kanye. I'm sorry. So, you know. We, I, to me, I'm throwing Jesse Smollett in that bucket <laughs> with Kanye. Like I said, Amarosa, uh, Chrisette Michelle, she's in that bucket too. Um, that's all I can think of right now. But yeah, he, you know, he can, he can, he can fuck out of here with that. You know what I'm saying for real. Um, okay, so moving on, mm -hmm. R. Kelly. Uh, we're gonna stay in Chicago in a little Chicago area because there was a lot going on out there this week, but. R. Kelly, man, this is a story that won't go away, but hopefully it will start to go away now. Because um, he just basically, he was indicted on uh, criminal sexual abuse charges and turned himself in uh, yesterday. Um, and I think as we were coming on the air or whatever, he had to go uh, in front of the judge in court to, mm -hmm. you know, okay. to face his charges. He's mm -hmm. being charged with 10 counts. I heard every count carried 10 years. You know what I'm saying? So he looking at Possibly 70 years, you know what I'm saying, for for his actions, man. And the investigation spans all the way back to 1998. So, what? it kind of overlaps with the other situation that he got off on in 2002. Like, this is some different shit. Right. As far as the, the history of the investigation goes. But what really sparked it is like we was talking about the other week the, the lawyer Michael Vanetti turned in the, the tape mm -hmm. the recent tape that he found um, you know what I'm saying <laughs> who what was that no I'm sorry go ahead get it right huh? you know what I'm saying it, it's his hat I don't know if they centered whoever designed it centered this part okay it's just really driving me crazy I what does that mean though let's let's pause that what, what, what's that mean what's, what's the WM for weed maps weed maps okay it's got not. you Tell us about it. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> well, I mean, I want to know about but it. But it, it, it's, um, it's grown since. But it, initially, it was an app so that you can find dispensaries. Okay. Where uh, marijuana is legal. Okay. Shout out to Weed Maps. Um, yeah, they gave, I went to, I was a vendor at a function that they had at Healthy Vapes and okay. um, they gave me this cute little hat. That's what's up. Wearing it ever since. <laughs> so you come in here with this information. Don't be trying to hold out. You know what I'm saying? You got good information that we got to spread to the world, man. Like, don't be holding out, man. That's good shit, though. Nah, shout out to Weed Mask, man. Um, for more information, definitely holler at Tangy. 
You hit her up. <laughs> hit her up or DM. Hit up the DM on, on IG. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know what it is. Tangeline Jolie. Hit her up. And uh, we spread the love as we do here on Beats, Rhymes, and Life. So, yeah, yeah. That's what the business is. Um, so, yeah. So, okay. So, we was talking about R. Kelly. Yes. The Chester child molester. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. Ten counts. Sexual criminal abuse. Um, I think they might have his ass this time. I hope so. Yeah, I mean, they I so. they have on tape, you know, him having sexual intercourse with an underage girl. And even on the tape, she allegedly says her age. So I don't really know what else they're going to need to to lock him away. But, you know, it seemed like it's pretty it's pretty damning at this point. Like, I don't it think depends. it's any way getting out of this. It depends. Because I thought about this. Okay. And I'm like. If, first of all, they have to prove that the young lady is underage. And I don't know if, I don't, they haven't said for sure that she's underage. All they have said was, in the video, Mm -hmm. he mentions, he refers to her genitalia as her age. Like he described it as 14 year old, da da da. Right, but I think, I think at one point in the tape, you know, you know how you when you getting it in, you might say some shit mm-hmm. and you'd be like, say that shit, mm-hmm. say that shit back <laughs> for real. Like, you know, how, you know what I'm saying? But there was a point in the tape where he did that and she said it back to him. That's what I'm did saying. Did you hear? Did you hear that, too? I mean, that's yeah. what I heard. OK, OK. But okay. that does not prove that she is underage. That just proved that he's gross. But that, it doesn't prove that she's underage. Not so, even if she says it on tape? I don't know. Because okay. I, can t- I, lie about, I can lie about my age. Okay. Like, okay. See, that's, that's what be getting y'all in trouble sometimes. See? I agree. I Lying agree. about that age. We all been there. You know what I'm saying? I remember being a little nigga in school. You know what I'm saying? And having a crush on the girls. But they ain't got no time for us. You know, we ain't time enough for them. They try and fuck with the niggas, you know, coming up to the school with the act legends. And, you know, that, that was the call back of my day. I'm, I'm dating myself, but, you know, that was the whip back in the day. But, you know, you know what I'm saying. You know, yeah. they was coming, pick them up from school and, and the flyers, whips and shit, you know. They ain't had no time for us, but, you know, that's not always a good thing. We It's a different time right now, you know what I'm saying. Definitely, Definitely. a different era, so, and, you know. What's fucked up is even throughout those eras, R. Kelly was still doing his dirt. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's it's just his time. Like yeah, if yeah. they get if he act if he is actually sentenced to seventy years. Oh, okay, that's cool. You like fifty something years old. You live, <laughs> he's fifty one. Yeah, he's fifty one. Yeah. A good long time. Committed as many uh, crimes against young females for at least like twenty. Over 20 at least, years. At least. Over 20 years. Because I, yeah, 20 years ago was 98, 99, mm-hmm. something like that. So, yeah, even before then. We well before that, that yeah. Like 92, 93. We talking about Aaliyah. Yeah, man. Aaliyah yeah, was my was, age. So, that that one hurt right there. I, I never really fucked with him the same after that. Because, you know, I used to have a little celebrity crush on Aaliyah. And, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I felt like he, he was taking one of our girls. Like, hold up, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Can't you find... A grown woman, you a superstar R and B singer. You can't find a grown. You gotta come get somebody from our our our, our group. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I took that shit personally. <laughs> I took it personally. I right? fuck it. You know what I'm saying? You. It just sucks. It was nasty, man. It, it's terrible, man. I mean, you, you know, <sighs> got to do something about it. Got to get him out of here. Yeah, we let it. We let it slide. <laughs> all this time we for far the too other long. Cheek, yep. You know what I'm saying? I mean, his fans included, because I was once a fan of his music. Yeah, absolutely, most um, definitely. It's annoying because, like, every now and then, a song of his might pop up in my head. Yeah, we was just it, talking about that last week. It remind me yeah. of like my childhood. Right, <laughs> so right, 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 like, right. Yeah, we was talking about that. Yeah, it, it, it sucks, it man. Is but you don't even look at it the same, so you know, no, it's like exactly <laughs> you know, get that trash out of here, man. Whatever. But so we're gonna see what develops with that. I'm sure we'll have more uh developments and updates for you in the weeks to come on that, because that's clearly far from over. But you know, we are moving in the right direction with that. Um let's go over this uh Meek Mill Michael Rappaport shit real quick. Cause I was I was kinda in my feelings about that, man. I felt some kind of way about that from I, old I'm, from old Remy, man. You know what I'm saying? Happened? So, you know, Michael Rappaport, you know, granted, he, he's a part of the culture. 
You know, um, he's been involved with the culture for a long time since the movie Zebrahead. You know, I don't, you know, that's some old school shit, but you might want to check it out. Deals with, you know, interracial dating in high school. But back in the 90s, though, so we talking about, you know, the height of hip hop culture. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, and he was, of course, the white boy who had a love interest in a black girl in the, in the neighborhood school. Mm-hmm. Anyway, he, you know, he's made movies uh, about the culture, made a, a biography about um, about a tribe called right, Quest as right. well, uh, Beats, Rhymes, and Life, just like, uh, you know, similar to the name of our show. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's of the culture, but he has a tendency, you know, he's opinionated, man. So he'd get online and be, you know what I'm saying, spitting out his opinions about how he feel about whatever. You know, he's a lightning rod type of person. So some of the stuff he says offends people. Sometimes people agree with him. Sometimes they don't, whatever. Mm-hmm. So he got on the joint. I don't know. I guess he was watching the All-Star, uh, All-Star game Sunday okay. and, and Meek opened up. Uh, for the game, okay. for the actual game, he was the opening performance or whatever. Uh-huh. Um, so he was on there, and he was just going in talking about Meek is a trash rapper. Everything he raps on, he raps off beat. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, that was him that said that. that. Was him got, that said oh, okay. that, right? And so then Meek clapped back, like, "Hold up, bro! You know, don't be speaking on the culture. You know what I'm saying? Like we asked you and shit. You know what I'm saying? We ain't asked you nothing. You right. know what I mean? And don't be speaking like you know what trash is. You don't even know what the fuck you talking about. Well, he, who, who is he to say anything about me? Like he 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 thinks he has an opinion, and he does. You know, he he's got an opinion, whatever. Uh, but the funny part was me trying to hit him back with the you know, wasn't you just the same dude? Or, a year ago, you was begging me for a selfie at a game, and I didn't even know who you was. They had to tell me who you was. <laughs> and he showed the selfie with him cheese and all in the joint, smiling and shit, whatever. So, um, so long story short, it was just funny, man. Like, I don't, you know, to me, like, Michael Rapport just need to go sit down somewhere. Just shut up, bro. I mean, you, you are part of the culture, granted. You do have an opinion, but... Watch your motherfucking mouth, bro. Yes, I agree. <laughs> don't don't say nothing about me. Yeah, you you you're not qualified to talk about. He can me. talk about his generation and let him. Yeah, say, yeah. You there know, you go. It, no. There you go. I'm with that. Don't come for me. I'm with that. Um, we about to get out of here in a minute. Um, yeah. So that's we gonna wrap it up. We ain't gonna talk. We we gonna say. We, I got something else in the chamber. We gonna we gonna hold that for next week though. <laughs> we going because this is an ongoing thing. You know, it, it's not gonna be dated. We can definitely still chop it up. So I'm gonna save it. Um, but nah. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for tuning in as usual. Stack Doe De Niro, Tangy in the building. Uh, don't forget to catch us next week. Of course, same time, same place, yes. right here. WLVS Radio. ListenVisionLive.com. Listen Vision Studios, same time, 12 o'clock. We're going to make it do what it do, as usual. On deck, no doubt, we got the OG, the legend, the Eddie Kane show is coming up next, you hurt? So make sure y'all stay tuned. Don't move. Don't make no sudden moves. It's a stick up, baby. <laughs> nah, I'm just like, <laughs> keep it locked. We see y'all next week, baby. Two words.